Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Day we hustle, but the night. Know that they ride or die. Yes. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Know that they ride or die. Center of balance right on the skis and handlebars. There we are. That's a lot better. If I go down that hill over there, coming up on the other side, be easy with just the bike, but with the bike and the skis, not so easy. So I'm taking the flat route. We have a Nordic trail here in the neighborhood. And actually, the Nordic trail is a cow pass here in the summertime. The rancher that owns the property is kind enough to let the Pesadine South Association. Go on to that Nordic Trail. Make it in the Nordic Trail. There's a couple volunteers that uh, drag the track with their snowmobiles and equipment. Flatten it. So I'm using my 360 camera this year and I have a weird contraption that I put together mounted on my helmet, one of my ski helmets. As you can see, it's cloudy and windy. But I'm going to do the best I can. The first leg of my Tridanathon this year is on my bike. Okay, we got the first leg done, off the bike, roll the bike up to the trail over there, and have a good place to park it. Okay. Well, I'm sure you don't want to listen to the wind blow in the microphone for the whole entire video, so I've switched over to an overdub here, and uh, I'll try to do a little bit more of that for the rest of the video. Sorry for the length of the video as well, but uh, I did shoot this over a couple of days, so it's going to be a little bit longer. I'll speed it up where I can and where it makes sense to. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm not exactly sure how long the 
Nordic Run is here. I would reckon it to be around a couple miles. It's a pretty good size cow pasture and actually this trail you can take uh, a lot further west towards uh, Crescent Butte. I'm not sure if everything's all connected to all the trails that lead into town. I've never been that far. I just kind of stick to this one run here. I was basically commenting on the weather right here and that uh, I'm heading directly into a headwind right here. There was very little glide in my skis. I kind of had to push through it until I came back around the other way and headed back towards home. Uh, it was headwind all the way. The snow was in really great shape. It was perfect for this uh, kind of activity on this day. And although it's very cloudy, very windy, it was actually pretty nice temperature out there. Lucky for you, my battery ran out about probably a third of the way through the Nordic run, and so uh, it shortened up the video quite a bit. Clouds are quite a bit different in the springtime because they carry a lot more moisture and you can actually smell it in the air. It's a really uh, pleasant smell, really refreshing. Lucky for you all, my battery died out there somewhere, so I don't know how much narration you got on the last bit, so I'm sure you're not worried about it, neither am I. I made it back to the bike, a little loop, pretty fun, even though the wind was blowing. Skis for a beginner cross country skier like myself. We've only been doing it since I moved up here. Uh, the waxless kind. And the way it's supposed to work is it has these little round knobs on the bottom of the ski. They're not very big, but they're supposed to dig in and keep you from 
sliding backwards and keep but able to move you ahead so and they do work like that fairly well bicycle set here that for my bike Center. Yeah, I think we're good. Look at the Here, my bike. Good. Hop on the bike. I got two parts. On the back of the house. I have two parts of the Tridentathon. Like I said, previous year it was to do that cross country loop and then run up to the mountain and do one run on snowboarding, one run on downhill. But I'm just out of practice on the snowboard. Skin. It's a far season. Not much snowboarding. I'm not very good at it. And here we go. I think I'll take the same route home. The flat route. This is how I should have carried my cross-country skis when I went over to the Nordic Trail. Much easier when they're evenly distributed across the handlebars. When I made it back to the house, I just about lost it in the driveway because the snow was so soft. It just, the front tire just sank down about two inches. I almost tipped the bike over. When I got back to the house, I found that it was too late in the day to get up on the ski mountain, so this is day two of the Tridanathon. This is actually St. Patrick's Day. A 
always like to go up to the Umbrella Bar, which is a restaurant that's at the top of one of the runs um, up the Painter Boy Lift on St. Patrick's Day and have a beer and uh, celebrate the holiday that way. Last year, when I came up on St. Patrick's Day, I came up too late in the day. It was about 1.30 when I got up here, and the lift line was like an hour and 45 minutes. By the time I made it over to the bar, uh, the umbrella bar, they had been closed for at least half an hour. So I want to try to get it a little bit earlier, uh, get up there on time to make it. Anathon Day 2. Also St. Patrick's Day. The time it is. We go up to the top of the Silver Queen left. Ski down to the Painter Boy left. Take Painter Boy up to the umbrella bar. Drink a St. Patty's Day beer. Then we come back down. That's the plan. I know my little camera setup looks ridiculous, but I really don't care.
啊。Get ready for a real action photo coming up here. Uh, I don't even know what happened, really, when it first happened. But looking back on it now, I can see there's a mound right there, a mound of snow, and it drives my right ski tip up into my left ski, causing my left ski to release. And I just spent out on the hill, and both skis came off. You can see my ski, one ski's running down the hill there a little ways. Uh, there was a really nice guy here that helped uh, get me put back together again. A guy on a snowboard, he stopped and uh, picked up my ski up above and brought it down to me and then uh, went down and got my other ski and gave it back to me. So I did appreciate his help. Uh, and then I had to uh, walk off to a flat spot to try to get the skis back on again because where I'm standing right there is uh, it, they're still pretty good. Um, you know, pitch to the hill. I don't even know what happened. Have a great day. Thank you. What's that? What I did. Is it rude or is it polite? Oh no, no, it's it's fine. Okay, okay. It's very polite. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I walk down to the flat over here. I'm gonna edit that out. I don't even know what happened. I hit something up there. Like a bump. A small bump. Caught an edge. Spun me around backwards. Well, I got myself all put back together and I'm ready to head on down to the painter boy chairlift and head on up to the umbrella bar. Have myself a happy St. Patty's Day beer, head on back down to the base, call it a day and the end of the Triganathon. Hope you like the special effects coming up. Well, this is the painter boy lift and the painter boy lift generally caters to uh, some beginning runs a uh, couple of intermediate runs off the backside and a terrain park off the backside as well but it also 
goes to the uh, umbrella bar up at the top. At this point, I was still feeling a little bit of humiliation from my little spill that I took on the top of the uh, I usually like to talk to people if they want to talk. Uh, I enjoy the conversation. If they do want to talk, if they don't want to talk, that's fine too. And you can generally get a read on that in the first couple seconds that you're on the left. So at this point, I've had my beer at the umbrella bar. You can see the umbrella bar in the background there on the right-hand side. Actually, it is an umbrella. That thing folds up. And, um, it's pretty nice when they do that, when the weather's great and nice and warm and stuff. But since COVID, they've done a different kind of uh, configuration out there. You can just go sit inside the umbrella bar, but you can't order drinking in there this season anyway. Hopefully we'll change that next year.
to the paradise like yesterday. Yeah, and from these guys that were talking to you, I was drinking my beer. Uh, they were from Georgia, and they said that they had heard that it was a 14-year-old girl. So, I certainly hope she's has survived it and is not too injured. But, the biggest towers on Crested Butte Mountain Resort are on that particular run, that particular lift. The Paradise Strait Lift. Some of those towers get up to 60 feet tall. Just, it wouldn't be good to fall off of any one of the towers or any place in between, but that particular lift gets up a little bit higher than the other ones. An update on the 14 year old girl that fell off of the lift in the Paradise Chair is uh, she did the exact same thing that I did four years ago, where I got my legs kind of twisted a little bit at the beginning, slid right off the chair and was hanging onto the lift right until the ropes where the rope sand and the soft snow where you can drop off into that. She did the exact same thing. So she wasn't injured at all. Uh, but it was kind of ironic. It was exactly what happened to me. Yeah, you really should never criticize anybody or think badly of anybody's ability to ski well or not ski so good or snowboard great or not snowboard so great. People are very judgmental. That's really too bad because it doesn't have to be that way. When I was in my early 20s, around 22, 23 or so, there was four of us that went up skiing down Brooklyn Ridge. And one of the guys in our group was like, he had never really skied very much. And he told me a couple of years ago that the other three of us abandoned him at the top uh, of a run, and he said it was an expert run, but I don't remember skiing that many expert runs over Breckenridge. But anyway, whatever it was not appropriate just to leave him there. I probably was a beginner. I apologize to him. That was just a couple of years ago. And when it happened was probably, you know, 35, 40 years ago. He's a good friend. I felt bad. I shouldn't have done that. My other two friends shouldn't have done that either. I don't know what we were thinking. But, you know, I don't, the other thing is, we don't really remember all the circumstances around that. I'm pretty sure I wasn't skiing expert runs back then. But even so, even if it was the intermediate run to beginner, you look down the slope of the pitch on an intermediate run as a beginner, and it looks like a cliff. So. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened. Take the bag and change it though. I just try to be the best friend I can. Going forward. Well, this is the final leg of the Tridanathon. This is my very last run. Gonna head down to the base 
on this one and uh, boy I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it took me a little while to produce this and I had uh, so many different uh, cuts of footage that I needed to edit and some of my software changed so it took me a while to kind of get the hang of it but I think I've got it now. Anyway if you if you enjoyed my video please please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel down below and if you want to participate in the Tridanathon in 2023 just let me know.